Hi, I'm Rick. Uh, welcome to the Need to Know uh, channel, and uh, we are uh, going to cover a topic today that has come up in our park because we have uh, recently started an upgrade from our old 30 amp services on all of our sites to 50 amp service. Um, now a lot of you are probably going, oh, well that's pretty cool man because you got you know your 30 amp up to 50 amp that's going to give you 20 more amps right? 20 amps ain't bad? Well <laughs> It's not that simple. You're not really getting 20 amps more. Sorry to say. Or am I sorry? Huh. Let's talk about that real quick. First of all, um, we're going to keep this uh, video really simple. We're just going to cover the fun stuff. Uh, I know it's going to be very disappointing to you professional electricians and electrical engineers. We're not going to talk about stuff like wire types and sizes. Uh, the length of the run, resistance, uh, heat. We're not going to talk about any of that stuff. We're just going to we're going to just talk about the theory of how this the 30 amp system and the 50 amp system for RVs work, um, because we're not doing an install. So all the rest of that stuff we really don't need to know. Okay. It, you can't just know amps. I mean, we're we're going 30 amps, 50 amps, and everybody's talking about amps. But you have there's more to the equation than that. You have to factor in volts too. Otherwise, you don't really understand how much power you have available to run your stuff. Okay. So uh, the equation goes like this: You've got amps times volts equals watts, and watts is a better measurement of how much power you're going to have available uh, to run all your things. Um, now, stuff and things is, is a good way to say it, but we're going to refer to stuff and things from this point forward in the video as the load, okay? And the reason why we're going to do that is because that's what electricians and engineers call it. And if we call it the load, we will instantly be welcomed into their club, which will increase our IQ by about 10 to 15%. That's why we're going to call it the load. Okay, so let's start with our 30 amp system. In a 30 amp system, you've got 30 amps times 20 volts, and that gives you 3,600 watts worth of power available. Okay, so the way that system works is you've got uh, one hot wire. And that's usually black. And then you've got a neutral wire, which is actually usually white. I have made it purple because I'm using white paper. <laughs> and uh, white, a white line wouldn't show up real good on white paper. So uh, our neutral for our purposes today is going to be purple. And then you've got the ground wire, also sometimes referred to as the safety wire. Uh, now, let's. The ground wire doesn't do anything at all to help you run your stuff. Oh, I said it. <laughs> My IQ just went down. <laughs> okay, so anyway, it doesn't help you run your load. It doesn't help any of your loads run. Okay, so uh, your hot wire uh, is going to, um, that's, that's supplying the power to your load. Okay, now your neutral wire, um, takes any of the power that isn't used by your load and sends it back to the meter. Your ground wire, again, doesn't do anything at all to help you run your load. But, like I said, it's also referred to as a safety wire sometimes. And that's a very good description. Because what the ground wire does is if your circuit is having a bad day, it provides your circuit with a method of venting its frustration in a means that doesn't end up killing you or setting your RV on fire. So it is kind of important. Now, here's the, here's the equation for the 50 amp circuit. Um, logically, you would think that 50 amps minus 30 amps would equal 20 amps. So that's telling you that you would have 20 amps more power after the upgrade uh, 
to run all your to run all your loads. Makes sense, right? It's basic math. I don't see how you go wrong there. So you're going to have 20 amps extra, right? Hmm. Well, the deal is electricians and engineers, um, they came up with a really creative way to do this math. Completely different than the way we would normally do math. And uh, it looks something more like this. They have 50 amps minus 30 amps equals 70 amps. So what? They're saying after the upgrade, you're going to have 70 amps more power. I don't even see how that's possible. It doesn't make any sense at all to me. So I got to looking into it, and I found out that these guys are pretty sneaky, right? What they've done, check this out, is they have one hot wire, right? That's an L1, like we did in, in the 30 amp system, and then they have a neutral amp. Uh, wire like they did in the 30 amp system, but then they added in one more hot wire that they call an L2. So they added in another wire. They added in one more wire. And when they did that, what happened was their equation breaks down like this. They have 50 amps times 120 volts equals 6,000 watts. And that would be where you were getting your 20 more amps, right? But then since they added the extra wire, they multiply that times 2, and they come up with 12,000 watts. So you're getting, you're going from 3,600 watts in your 30 amp circuit to 12,000 watts in your 50 amp circuit. That's quite an upgrade. That is 70% more power by upgrading to a 50 amp circuit. So, that is going to kind of wrap this up. That's what I wanted to show you guys is that, that the 50 amp service is, a, there's a lot more advantage to it than what it, there appears to be on the surface. Now, I would love it. See, I'm, I'm a, a do-it-yourselfer that thinks he knows everything, right? And for the most part, I do. <laughs> anyway, I would love it if some of you uh, professional electricians, electrical engineers, maybe some of the folks on our architectural committee here in the park would weigh in on this. Let me know where I'm wrong. Let me know where I'm right. But go ahead and leave your comments. Um, also, uh, I'm going to be doing a follow-up video on this where I'm going to tackle a few of your questions that I anticipate that you might have. For example, well, what if my RV is only a 30 amp circuit? You know, I mean, what am I going to do with 50 amp receptacle if my RV is only 30 amps? Okay, we'll talk about that. And the other thing that we'll talk about, and I know it's got to be the biggest question on everybody's mind, if I upgrade to 50 amps, will I be able to run a regular house-type clothes dryer off of that? Huh. That's interesting. That one I want to talk about. And... I would really like it if you would follow these videos, get all the information, and so you want to hit the subscribe button, get on our channel, check out our videos, and you know what? It's kind of a nice day outside, so I want to get out there and do some stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye. Again, thanks for stopping by the Need to Know channel. I'm Rick. See you next time.